Hello guys and welcome to this tutorial on how to use Adobe Blender. In this video, we will basically be animating a walk cycle of a character and we'll be using this reference over here that I have. And I think if you want to download this reference, you could head on to Google and then search for walk cycle reference. And you can find that picture over here somewhere. Try and get that picture imported and let's get started. Alright, now that I have my reference with it, let's just increase our and rename this to reference. And let's increase our, our exposure time to like 3 seconds or something. This doesn't really matter right now, but we'll kind of extend the whole animation so that you can walk from the beginning of the frame to the end of the frame. So we just need the exposure time to be as long as possible. Not too long, but as long as possible. Right. So we create a new layer and then we call it drawing to show that that's where we're drawing the character. So let's reduce the opacity for this reference layer. Let's go to properties and then opacity over here. In the later, in the older versions, I think they would be transparency better. But either works. First, is the same as transparency. So let's just reduce it to somewhere around 24, 25. Yeah, just like that. So now we are going to base on this reference to draw each. We're going to draw each of these poses on one frame. So each of them will have an individual frame over here on the green layer but before we draw each one we need to create a blank here so then we can start drawing all over all right so after drawing everything we are going to rearrange them in such a way that they will move smoothly without any breakages but you understand that as I do it so let's just get started with the drawing over here I'm using a graphics tablet so I'm just going to draw directly if I was to be using a mouse or a trackpad on the keyboard or on the laptop, I'll be I'll most likely be using the shape tools over to here. But that doesn't really matter since I have tablets. So on the first drawing frame, I'm going to draw this first guy over here. And I'm not going to try to make it too detailed. I just need this pose. Now this is just a test animation, so I'm not going to take my time to make too much detail. <coughs> Alright, so you see I have this frame drawn. So we're going to move on to the next frame and draw the next pose. And I think it's best we lock the reference layer so that we don't mistakenly move or erase anything on that layer. Alright, so let's draw the second frame. So basically, I'm going to repeat. Wait a second. Do you guys see the mistake I've made? I'm supposed, I was supposed to pick a blank keyframe before drawing the second one. So it's like it's repeating the same drawing from the first frame. I don't want that, so I'm just going to delete that one. Alright, so the next time I'm going to pick a blank, which is this button, or F7, that creates a blank here. You turn on your onions, can you get to see the green okay? Alright, so we Alright, next frame, we set blank here. So we're basically the same thing that I'm using. All the things, so I'm gonna work on that and then get back to you guys. All 
Alright, so I've drawn every single frame. I've drawn every one of the poses of the video pole. So I'm going to arrange them in such a way that they flow perfectly instead of looking like this. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So we select this tool called the free transform tool. Click on the frame you want and then you move the frame to make sure that it aligns with the foot. So it will be like he stepped onto the ground. You get it? So I'm going to move all of them and let their feet align. So I'll make sure the left foot aligns with the left foot or the next foot. So if I click this frame and move, pull it backward. And then let's align right here. So as you can see, it's snapping directly to the position I want, which is because I'm using a person holding shift while doing this. So we can even turn off the reference here and then turn on onion scan so we can see what the previous drawing is. Okay, move on to the next screen. Move it backward. Next frame, same for that. Next frame. Make sure the foot, this time is the right foot, so it will be the right foot. Move the next frame. Next frame. The last screen. Alright. So as you can see we have a moving working character. Which is really really cool. So I play it's going to be really fast since it's less than a second. We'll create a loop so you can see how it looks like. Alright, so I'm going to extend how long it takes. So I'm going to extend it by, let's say, 27. And then I press play. Yep, this seems perfect. Alright, so now that I've drawn all of them on an individual layer and I've extended it to match the time, I'm going to duplicate the work cycle and then extend it to extend this where you keep working to the end of the frame. But before I do that, as you can see over here on the reference, it starts with contact and then ends with contact. And so if I duplicate it, it's going to repeat contact all over again and I don't want that to happen. I want each frame to happen once and then the next frame with a different pose continues. So I'm going to ignore the first frame over here which is contact because the one the last frame will be the same as that. Okay, so I'm going to click the second frame so that I can ignore the first contact. Click the second frame and press and hold shift. And then click the last frame. Just like you are selecting, just like what you do when you are selecting a lot of icons on the desktop. Another way you can do this is by just dragging on the frames you want. So I'm going to duplicate the frames that I've selected. So I can do that by right clicking, copy frames, then I go to where I want to start the next frame from, and then paste frames. So if you look at it, if I turn it on, you can see it has 
indicated it by stars from the back. Another way of duplicating all those frames is by selecting all of them and pressing press and hold Alt and then drag. This is also similar to how you duplicate shapes in Photoshop. I think it's an Adobe thing that you do. Press and hold Alt to duplicate. So now I'm going to select from the duplicates or the duplicated frames that I need and I'm going to move them ahead so that he doesn't come back to where it started from on the first duplicated frame. So I'm going to select all the duplicated frames and then there's this button here that allows you to edit multiple frames at the same time but you have to choose the range of the frames that you want to work on. So you can do this you can pull this ring backward to choose the number of frames you want to edit. But this time I want to edit all the frames right here. So I select all of them like this. So you can see the make sure it's on the free transform tool. So you can see the free transform tool I selected all of them. With my onion skin on, you can see where the path the previous you can see where the previous drawing is so i'm going to move them forward and we'll see how it goes i think i made a mistake somewhere let's play you can see Okay, so the mistake wasn't too clear. Thank you. Okay, so what? All right, so I'm going to repeat that same process until I get to the end of the frame. So when I'm at the half. Alright, so you have to take your time and arrange them perfectly so it doesn't eat any weird animations that you never wanted. So we're going to remove it. Alright, I think it's done now. I'm gonna press play and then see it go. Looks like it's great. Great enough. Alright, so I'm going to play the whole thing. Alright, so we've been able to animate our character to work. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope I didn't confuse you guys too much. Um, 
Terribly anime can be a bit frustrating sometimes, even for me. But if you get used to it, the frustration isn't so powerful on you. It's as simple as that. Let me give you a little review. So basically, I just drew every single frame, each of the poses on a single frame. Then later, I expanded the frame so that the time interval will fit and be more realistic. And then later on, I just uh, later on I duplicated all those frames and moved them to the continuous frames. And then I pulled those frames ahead of the previous frame so that you continue working instead of starting all over again when it gets to the end. And then I kept repeating the same process till we got to the end of the frame, end of the screen. So yeah. That's basically for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you were able to learn something from this video. And let me know if you guys have any comments or any problems you face when you're doing this. And I can answer that for you in the comment section. Be sure to like this video if you like to see these kind of contents. And don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. Thanks for watching once again, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.